Silver has been the best performing commodity of 2016, and in appreciation of our listeners, Palisade Radio and Palisade Research are giving away a free American Eagle one-ounce silver round each and every week for the rest of the year. Just visit palisaderadio.com and enter your email for a chance to win. Hey everybody, welcome to the Dollar Vigilante, your home for surviving and prospering during and after the dollar collapse. I actually had a great guest come on, a, a good friend of mine, Colin Cattell of Palisade, Cap, uh, Palisade Global Investments. And uh, it was actually back in November. And we talked about how we both thought we were right near the bottom of the gold, uh, silver, and actually gold mining stocks. And uh, it actually turned out that the exact bottom, it turned out, was pretty much on January 1st of this year. And it's actually skyrocketed since then. Many people don't even know. Uh, hardly anyone knows that the price of silver alone is up nearly 50% already this year. Uh, many of these mining stocks have skyrocketed, of course, here at the Dollar Vigilante. We've uh, made a lot of profits with that. Uh, but both Colin and I both think we're still in the early stages of this. And interestingly enough, as I, as I mentioned, back in November, we both thought that was pretty close to the bottom, and we turned out to be right. So, Colin, uh, you're coming in from, Car- uh, where are you, Medellin, Colombia? I'm in Medellin, Colombia today, and uh, a little bit of an unprofessional setup on my side. I'm holding my microphone in my hand, but uh, you got a little bit of a, a view of the beautiful city, and I know it's one of your favorite places to go. Yeah, I do love Medellin. For people who haven't been there, it's an amazing place. My favorite place to go there is a bar called the La Bolsa, uh, which actually is a, a sort of uh, based on the stock market sort of a thing. So the drink prices go up and down depending on the, uh, supply and demand, a really cool place. I don't know if you've been there. I haven't been there yet, but I'll have to check it out. So <laughs> yeah, well, for sure. um, Jeff, thanks. You know, thanks so much for getting me back on the program. I do appreciate it, and uh, I think it was very good timing when we had the uh, the last interview when I was with you in Acapulco. Uh, we had all the telltale signs of of a bottom forming. Uh, typically, a uh, a bear market consists of uh, duration and percentage drop, and uh, we had the longest in terms of duration the bear market in gold stocks was the longest that we've ever had in history going back to the 30s so we had about a five-year bear market which is very severe and then if you look at the price decline we also had uh depending on which uh if you're looking at the majors the mid tiers or the small caps anywhere from about 85 to a 90 five percent drop so the the duration and the decline amount were both spectacular and when something gets that depressed and that oversold uh, they say the cure for uh, low prices is low prices and that's exactly what happened here so uh, I I didn't think that the bottom was just a month away when we did that interview a month or two away but uh, 2016 has been a spectacular year for your subscribers. I, I know uh, Ed Bugos very well, and he's got some great companies that he suggests and some great uh, anal- analysis on the market, and everything's just been going up. It's been a great year for gold investors so far. Yeah, it has been. And But uh, which I should mention, I don't think we're anywhere near the end of this. And actually, uh, one of the main reasons I like to have you on is because you're really into the uh, putting the charts together, looking at the data, looking at the long term charts, too, not just being uh, just focused on what's happening in the last month or two. And you always have some great data. And I think you put some charts together that kind of show that we are just in the early stages of this bull market. Right. So we'll have our uh, friend Pete put these up in the editing process while I'm talking. So we'll put these on the screen. Uh, There were five charts that I showed last time, and I'm going to show those five charts again. I think what's most shocking about these five charts is that a couple of them don't even look like they've moved. And that's despite the fact that the gold stocks are up 150 percent. So the move seems dramatic for those who had had money in uh, just starting in January. You've made uh, quite a bit. But in the context of how much things dropped, you haven't made that much. Uh, So the first chart that I'm going to bring up is the Bloomberg Commodity Index versus the S&P 500. Uh, Now, the Bloomberg Commodity Index is a basket of index, a basket of commodities. It's not, you know, just gold. So this is uh, not very reflective of the gold stocks we're talking about. But the commodities do typically move somewhat in tandem. And what you can see here is the the commodity index hasn't moved up at all. Uh, And at the same time, the S&P 500 has continued to go up. Uh, which I know is shocking to you and shocking, shocking to me and a lot of people that listen to my show. Um, the the second chart is once again a similar thing. It's the S and P 500 to the gold silver sector ratio, and basically what this shows is that the S and P against the price of gold and silver is at a historic high right now. And once again, the move that we've had over the last six months is not registering on the chart yet. So. That goes to show that 
nothing has really occurred yet. Um, now, as we get to the third chart, this is more focused on the gold stocks. And this is a gold stocks to the gold price ratio. I'm going to touch on this uh, a little later in the interview. But what we had, if you remember, Jeff, was that the HUI, which represents the gold miners, compared to the price of gold, the underlying metal, was historically low back in November. In fact, it had never been that low in history. You'll see on this chart now that uh, the, the correction has clearly shown itself and prices are starting to recover. Uh, the fourth chart here is a, a chart we put out initially back in, uh, I believe, July or August of last year. And it, it went uh, pretty viral uh, up in Canada across the, the gold markets because what it shows is all of the bear and bull markets of the Toronto Venture Exchange. For your listeners that aren't familiar, the Toronto Venture Exchange is where most of the gold uh, exploration and development companies of the world live. So the, uh, the Venture Exchange is about 70% consisted of just mining stocks. And so when the Venture Exchange goes up, it's a very good indicator that the mining underlying mining stocks are going up. What you'll see is what just ended about six months ago was a 1,200-day long bear market in these stocks. It was brutal for anybody who has invested. You lost almost all of your money. Look at what's just happened in the last 136 trading days. We've gone up 70% on the Venture Exchange. And the Venture Exchange is not only consisting of mining stocks. So that means the mining stocks have gone up even more. The fifth chart here is a chart that uh, my friend Jordan Roy Byrne over the Daily Golds put together. And it compares the red line that you see is is the current bear market that started in 2011 and the ensuing bull market that's just begun. And then it compares all of the past bear markets in the, go in the gold mining index going back to, uh, it looks like, the 70s. And so what you can do is you can say, how far did it drop and how long did the drop take? And as I had pointed out before, this was the worst drop in terms of duration and percentage. Now we're coming out of it, but take a look at just how little the movement's been so far and how much more that we probably have left to go. Yeah, uh, many of these charts uh, kind of show that. Uh, it's pretty dramatic, especially as you pointed out. Uh, many of these markets have skyrocketed, but when you look at the longer-term chart, it looks like the first or second inning. So it's it's a really interesting uh, time. And I know it's so many people, uh, uh, well, actually, your average person, the average person in public has no idea that this bull market has already started. It's definitely not on CNBC. It's not on CNN. Oh, the gold, gold bull market has resumed, and uh, gold mining stocks have been soaring. They don't talk about any of that. They don't even, most people, like I said, don't even know silver's gone up nearly 50% already this year, but still has probably a long ways to go. So let me ask you about that. How long do you think this bull market will last? I think trying to time the length of the bull market is difficult, but we've done some research and come up with some ideas. Uh, and I think the best indicator is this. A bear market is typically shorter and more dramatic than a bull market. So the decline that comes before a bull market starts is usually uh, shorter than the bull market. We, we just had a five-year bear market in these stocks. And you can run the same exercise from 1996 to 2001. We had almost a five-year bear market in the gold stocks. You then had that epic move from 2001 all the way up until the crash of 2008, where we had about a seven, seven and a half year bull market. My guess is as good as anybody's. I think this bull market is just in the first inning, like you just said. And if some of the things you're predicting come true, and I, I share many of the same sentiments about the global economy, uh, this could really be a super cycle in gold where we get a blow off. Uh, if the public starts rushing in and gold goes 2000 3000 4000 up to $10,000 an ounce, uh, who knows how long this could go on. So I think it's going to be pretty spectacular. Yeah, I think so, too. And I think you usually can tell when it's time to sell. And it's usually when your taxi driver, I guess Uber driver now, tells you to be buying gold stocks. And I have not heard that from anybody. In fact, outside of my own circles, no one has any idea this has begun. And that's actually uh, the right time to be getting in. Uh, many people try to time the bottom, and that can be very dangerous in these things. And if you time the bottom and you tried to get in two years ago, you would have, as Colin pointed out, lost a lot up until January of this year. And then you would have made it all back. But it would have been a really tough two years 
years. Uh, but uh, many people like to see it sort of start before they jump in. And uh, I think those are pretty smart people and uh, they should be paying attention to what's going on right now because this looks like it has started and now where it goes from here is anyone's guess. And of course we could see a pullback. We, we are in the summer now. Uh, the summer is generally uh, almost always a time of pullbacks in these sort of stocks, but it might not as well as you pointed out. And if, again, if my predictions come right on what's going to happen in August, September and October of this year, anything is possible. And I know you have some very uh, interesting ways that you, uh, you leverage some of these things. You have unique strategies on how to lever these things. Why don't you give people some information about that? For sure. I, I, I want to share one last chart that I forgot to, to pull up, and I know you have it sure. in front of you. Uh, it's another one by Jordan at thedailygold.com, and this is very pertinent to the point you just made. If you look at this, this chart, it's got uh, today's bull market is the black line. So that just started in January. You can barely see it at the bottom left of the screen. Overlaying on that is the 2008 to 2011 bull market in the, in the gold stocks. And then overlaying on top of that as well is the 2001 to 2007 bull market. And in there, you'll see some pullbacks if you look, especially on the, that 2001 to 07 uh, recovery. But we are right in line with, with where we should be right now. Uh, it's not, it doesn't look overbought. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't look like it's lagging. So we could go on for uh, several, several months here without any considerable pullback. Your guess, once again, as good as mine on that. Um, but yeah, I think it's important to uh, discuss how to get levered to the gold play. Gold itself is an insurance policy of sorts. Uh, it's a way to bet against fiat currencies of the world, which is something very prudent to do, in my opinion. Uh, gold is, uh, when gold goes up, you're making money based on the fact that the currencies of the world are dropping. When gold is going up, there's a way to make an incredible amount of money, which is investing in the gold stocks. The reason that the gold stocks make so much more money is that if gold goes from $1,100 down to 1000 and you hold gold, you've lost about 10% of your money. If gold goes from 1100 to 1000 and you're a gold mining company, that could be the difference between an operating and profitable mine and a mine closure because it costs money to get gold out of the ground. So what that means is in a rising gold price environment, and this goes for any commodity, uh, the returns that you're going to have on the gold stocks are going to almost always be better than gold. If not, it'd be hard to find a stock that's not performing higher percentage than gold. So this year you have gold up, I think, uh, about 30% so far. And at the same time, you have the largest mining companies in the world are up about 150%. I don't expect that trend to stop. So, um, you know, I think, I think looking at uh, a dual strategy of gold and speculation on the mining stocks is, is something very smart. And I know it's something that you share with your listener base all the time. Yeah, absolutely. And I know you have a, sort of a family history of being involved in these markets. And when I met you, I was really interested to hear you're such a young guy, but you seem to have so much uh, knowledge of history of past bull markets and the precious metals. And I know as well, because I grew up in Canada, I was in Vancouver for uh, a number of years from about 2000, or sorry, 1991 to about 2003. Uh, and I, I grew up around a lot of these sort of uh, Vancouver stock market sort of people. Of course, I started Canada's largest financial website stockist.com so I was always involved with these people in one way or another and it was fascinating especially going through that last bull that was in uh, around 1994 which was just a short one but it was it was an amazing one in terms of potential profits with things like of course Briax which turned out to be a scam but it went from 10 cents to 250 dollars uh, there was many others I remember there's one called Cardaway it went from a few cents to 21 dollars in a couple of weeks uh, I don't think we're gonna see anything like that again because uh, all the regulations and all that sort of a thing uh, has sort of gotten rid of a lot of the promotion sort of stuff. Uh, and now it's uh, it's actually really hard for these mining companies to put out any information uh, with all the governments telling them you know, what they have to do, which actually I think is negative. I'd rather see a, a totally free market with all this wild and crazy stuff than what we have today where it's uh, these companies are paying millions of dollars a year just with lawyers and regulatory fees and all that sort of stuff. But it's interesting, your past history, and, and so you can kind of recognize that we're on the cusp of another great one and you're positioning to take advantage of it. 
Yeah, I think one thing to talk about is uh, there's a big difference between buying stocks and getting involved in uh, the Canadian markets because an exploration company is inherently capital intensive, very risky, and they don't make money. Uh, so most of these mining exploration companies, they get a, a project, maybe it's in Columbia where I am, uh, and then they have to go run geophysics, all different kinds of tests, rock, uh, rock sampling, uh, and then ultimately drilling. Uh, if a drill hole hits and, can, and you continue to hit, then uh, a company like Briex, which was a scam, but uh, it can go from $0.10 cents to $10 or something even much more significant. Because of the risk that's inherent in this type of investing, Meaning, if you want to write, if Jeff, you want to write a check directly to the company to say, here's $20,000, I want you to go use this to drill some holes, uh, they're going to offer you additional upside. They're not just going to sell you a share, they're going to sell you a share with a warrant attached. And most people glaze over the warrant because they don't fully grasp just how important the warrant is. But uh, investing in the resource space without at least some warrant exposure, I think, is um, not, not a very prudent way to invest in the space. Uh, just to give a, a very basic example, because I I know this can be difficult to wrap, um, wrap your head around and hear it the first time. Uh, we participated in a company called uh, Ora Vista, Ora Vista Gold. And uh, the stock was at five cents, and they gave us, uh, we participated at five cents with a full warrant at 10 cents, and the warrant was good for 12 months. The stock's now at 35 cents. So a basic calculation, if I had bought it on the market, Jeff, would be that now I have made seven times my money. However, I've made seven times my money on the share, and I'm allowed now to buy an additional share at 10 cents and sell it the same day for 35 cents, which means I've made another five times my money. So I'm up about 12 times on that investment in just two and a half months. And this story isn't isolated. There's a lot of companies like this, and that warrant gives you such a kicker. And as an investor, you deserve that warrant because you're risking money on something that is extremely risky. Uh, one one last point to add to that, and we talked about this last time, is that uh, when the market is in a bull market, everything kind of seems to go up. And when you're in a bear market, even the best of companies get crushed with the worst. Um, so I would never advise recklessly investing in any company with the name gold in it, but it's a great buffer to have in place that probably if you're in the right place at the right time and you're investing in gold stocks right now, it's gonna you're going to be hard-pressed to not make money. So... Uh, I think it's time to jump in and take advantage of what we have going on. Yeah, investing in the warrants, I know from personal experience, just uh, adds an entirely new dimension to the amount of profits you can make. I remember I bought Osisco uh, back in, around, I think it was 2004. It was around 25 cents and a private placement, got a half warrant or something. I think it went on to be 5 or $10. So it essentially doubled my profits on it without doubling my risk because the warrant, of course, is right. no extra risk, uh, but you get the potential of the profit. And I remember my biggest, uh, one of my biggest wins was, I think it was Copper Fox uh, that, uh, um, yeah, I think that was it. I think it was called Copper Fox, and it was yep. around eight cents in 2006. And I bought the private placement, or no, it was around 2008. It was uh, after the, a lot of the mining stocks had crashed, and I I took a chance, and it went up to over a dollar, and I got a full warrant at eight cents. So I ended up making just a massive killing. And I know Ed Bugos uh, is looking right now at <clears throat> how we can start to get some of our subscribers into some of these uh, private placements, uh, which will actually double their potential. But of course, you have to be an accredited investor, and all these government regulations and all this stuff. But if you can get through all that, uh, it's kind of funny though, isn't it, Colin, that uh, they put in all these accredited investor stuff to protect the, uh, the small investor, uh, when in fact, that's one of the best ways that you can make a massive amount of money in these stocks. Yeah, and I don't know if you know this, Jeff, but they recently put a exemption in place for non-accredited investors to be able to participate in the financings as long as they can put $150,000 into one placement. That means they've done their due diligence. So think about how rid ridiculous it is for somebody with a net worth less than a million dollars putting $150,000 into one junior exploration company just to be able to say it was a safe investment. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very difficult. I, I read a lot of the stuff that you and Ed put out in some of the comments on your Facebook page. A lot of people saying, how do I invest in this if I'm a U.S. person? There's hardly any brokerage houses in Canada left that will deal with U.S. people because of U.S. regulations on this stuff. And I don't, I don't have a good answer at this time if you're a U.S. person on how to do that. I, I think probably uh, you and Ed could, could help some people out with that. But, yeah, it's uh, a bit of a rant of mine. The regulations are very stiff. 
Yeah, actually, if you sign up for the Dollar Vigilante newsletter, you get access to our beginner's guide to investing. And in that in that guide, we have information on this. We actually have some brokers that we do know quite well. I'm sure you probably know one of them, uh, Ben Johnson of First Northwest, uh, is one that I recommend in the U.S. That's He's been in this mining uh, business for decades. Uh, so we do have uh, uh, people that can help you if you want to get into it. Just subscribe to the Dollar Vigilante. Subscribe to the premium version to get these sort of uh, investment opportunities. And just go to dollarvigilante.com slash subscribe for that. Uh, Colin, it's always been a, always a pleasure to have you on. Uh, great to see you again. Thanks for uh, more great charts and great information. Uh, why don't you let people know where they can find out more information on you? And uh, I think you have your own show uh, where they can uh, find that. Yeah. So uh, our, our main website for our investment company is palisadeglobal.com. Feel free to visit that and take a look at what we're doing. Uh, we also have Palisade Research. That's palisade-research.com, which is where those great charts come from. And we have uh, those coming out each and every week. Feel free to sign up. And Palisade Radio is the uh, the show I host. It's not quite not quite as big and prolific as yours is, Jeff. But uh, we're very mining centric focused. We've had guys like Mark Faber, Rick Rule, Eric brought on in just the last couple of weeks. We've had you on in the past. And my final plug is we're doing a uh, silver giveaway right now. We're giving away one ounce American Eagle silver coin each and every week for the rest of the year. All you have to do is go to the website and sign up with your email. Uh, you'll you'll get put on our email list, and you'll get a free 15-page uh, report on silver investing, and you might you might win a silver coin. So uh, definitely go and sign up. Yeah, and I, I definitely recommend it. Colin puts out great information. Definitely, if you're interested in mining stuff, uh, pay attention to what he's doing. He's all over it. This is what he does for a living, and uh, he's one of the smartest guys I've seen in the business, and a young guy, too, which I kind of like, because there isn't a lot of the young guys anymore. Most of the guys who are really good at this sort of stuff are getting into their 60s, 70s, and 80s now, uh, so it's good to see a few, few young guys picking up the slack. Yeah, they're they're coming. There's uh, there's some young people, but not too many. Well, Jeff, thank you, uh, thank you for having me on, and I'll be happy to come back anytime. Yeah, my pleasure. And uh, yeah, again, if you're interested in mining stocks and things like that, uh, check out our newsletter, Dollar Vigilante. It's actually up over 200% over the last year. Uh, we have one of the best analysts in the world, if not the best. Actually, I'll say he is the best, Ed Bugos. Uh, he's w massively respected in the mining business. He's uh, uh, just a genius when it comes to investing in these mining stocks. And so you can get access to that with our newsletter, dollarvigilante.com slash subscribe. So that's it for the Dollar Vigilante. I'll let Colin head back into the streets of dangerous Medellin. I'm here in the dangerous streets of Acapulco, Mexico. Uh, neither are very dangerous. Turn off your TV. It's called programming for a reason. And that's it for the Dollar Vigilante. Stay safe out there. I think you understand the junior mining sector and you think that the participants in the mining sector, junior mining sector, are good people and kind people. Hit the bit. And the world is always going to need raw material. It's going to need copper and gold and nickel and so forth. Totally destabilized. Hey, hey, troll, did you hear what's going on in Yemen? Are you too stupid? <laughs>